Welcome to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglin. I'm your host, Joshua T. Berglin. Thank you so much for being here today. We have an awesome guest. Uh, I am so excited to tap into this guy's mind. And so all of the 21 questions are carefully selected to be able to showcase really all who our guest Justin Breen is. I mean, look, he's so accomplished and you know, as far as far as being an author, I mean, he's got one of the best-selling books on Amazon. Uh, he's got a book coming out where Deepak Chopra is writing the introduction. He's associated with Dr. Peter Diamond. He's doing all kinds of amazing things. And of course, he's the CEO and co-founder of the Epic Fit Network. Uh, and this has been recently named one of the top five masterminds in the world. And what is his mastermind about? Well, Essentially, he's the connector of all visionaries. He's like the home base for visionaries to come, learn, grow, and go out and do their thing. It's the ultimate think tank. And the more I dive into what his mastermind's all about, I believe it's something that not only I want to be a part of, that I think other people will too, especially if you're a legitimate visionary. And I, of course, speaking as a visionary, I know that being a visionary can be one of the most lonely experiences ever because you know, you see things that other people don't see yet. You're a forerunner. You're the one that was designed to take the bullets, the one to be ridiculed and made fun of, the one to feel isolated and alone. Being a visionary is not easy. Yeah, sure, it's a lot of fun and it comes with some really cool gifts and neat things, but it's also tough. And so knowing a little bit of what Justin does and what he's about for me is exciting. But that said, there's so much that I want to know, and there's so much that I want to get to to get to know and to learn from Justin. So today is going to be awesome. Again, these questions, all 21 of them, are carefully selected to showcase all of what Justin is about. Uh, they're fun questions, but they're deep questions, and they are intended to get the best out of Justin. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for being here. I want to give a shout out to my own platform really quick. I don't really promote the other ones, even though you'll see clips and things on some of the other platforms. We believe in independent media at the World's Mayor Experience. This is what we teach. We wrote the book, Media Company in a Box. We have a bunch of free trainings on our website. We have a bunch of services. We have a brand new mentorship program where you can earn while you learn. Um, and of course, you know, I've written several books now, uh, The Devil Inside Me, which is my story of uh, how I turn my life around, and it's 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 a it's a wild story. But I also wrote Media Company in a Box, which is the ultimate manual for you to learn the future of media, the future of business. And th by the way, the coolest thing about the changes that are coming is that the changes that are coming will bring accessibility to all, and that means everyone's going to have an equal shot at success. And that is very, very important in my my world. I've worked with complex disabilities for 18 years of my life, um, but I've always been passionate about fighting for the underserved. And one of the tools or one of the things that is available to all of us right now, regardless, rich or poor, regardless of your mental illness, regardless of your addiction, regardless of your struggles, regardless of your dog just died, regardless of how much money you have or your education or anything, we all have the same opportunity to utilize these media tools to make our dreams come true. I mean, that's the simple way of putting it. Now, there's the work involved, absolutely, but there's skills and tools that we all need to be learning right now, and just learning AI isn't it. In fact, if you're being advised just to go all in on AI, you're being advised incorrectly. There's a bigger picture to be paying attention to, and that's what Media Company in a Box is. Now, of course, we also have some fun other books that tie into Media Company in a Box that are more on the science fiction realm, but the very same tools or visions that I had to write Seven Types of Human and Five War Theory with Paul Carpenter, uh, the very same visions are the same visions that allowed me to see what tools that we need to know, and that's what's in Media Company in a Box. So anyway, it's an immersive reading platform. It's an omni-media platform. There's virtual experiences on our platform. There's all kinds of amazing, amazing tools and resources for you and tons of entertainment as well. And this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, or however you identify, is going to be awesome. There's going to be a lot of value here because the questions are designed to bring that, but also 
Justin's just a fascinating guy. And uh, yeah, y'all are in for a treat. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the CEO and co-founder of the Epic Fit Network, top five mastermind on the planet. That means even Mars and the moon too. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. Justin Breen. Welcome to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglin. We are so blessed to have Mr. Justin Breen here today. Justin, how you doing, man? Uh, endlessly grateful to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm grateful to have you here, but I want to ask you the very first question that doesn't count in 21 questions, uh, but this is the most important question I'm going to think I'm going to ask you, and that is, what are you grateful for today and why? Um. I just watched this uh, movie called The Champion. It's a, uh, I think it's based in. Well, it's based in Spain. It's about a great uh, soccer player, um, and then he has a teacher um, who he calls Maestro. And then the teacher was talking to him about um, uh, a genius is the one who is most like himself. So a genius is one who is most like himself. So. I think everything to me is about uh, purpose and loved ones um, and being authentic. So grateful to be able to do that and keep doing that. I really like that answer. And that's probably one of the more unique answers I've had from that question. So thank you for that. All right. You ready for 21 questions? Sure. Yes, sir. All right. This one, <laughs> superhero powers. If the epic fit network were a superhero what would its superpower be and how would it save the world yeah so um i as i've learned um being direct and authentic things just manifest themselves so um uh one of my friends who's in our network uh dean owen um dean uh bought the second flying car in the United States. And so he messaged me uh, two days ago that his friend, uh, pastor and coach uh, commented yesterday that our group is like the movie, the X-Men. We are quote, all jacked up in a material way, but that forced us to develop exceptional strengths. If we are X-Men, uh, he's telling me that I am Charles Xavier. So, I've found as raising level of consciousness and awareness, um, again, of being most like yourself, then the question is already <laughs> was answered two days ago <laughs> by someone else. And then, <laughs> so it's um, like those kind of things maybe used to happen for me once or twice a month. Now it's five times a day, um, as long as I'm talking to people like us um, who are also living their purpose. Well, thank you for your acknowledgement in that, and I appreciate that answer. All right, so here's the visionary dinner party. You're known for connecting visionaries. If you could host a dinner party with any three visionaries from history, who would you invite and why? Um, yeah, it's a good it's a good question. Um, it's a fair question. Um, certainly, uh, Emerson, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, my favorite quote is to be great is to be misunderstood. That's from him. To be great is to be misunderstood. Um, my father, uh, who died when I was 13, he was a, a war hero in World War II, 61 when I was born. Um, 61, and then uh, my grandmother, his, uh, my father's mother, who I'm named in honor of, and she was a pure, just a pure hero. Her name was Ida, um, pure, just a pure pure hero you want me to read about her you want me to all right, hold on this I, I gotta find it so um you know so i'm named after my grandmother and then uh my dad was 61 when i was born and um so and he had three brothers and my grandmother uh and and her husband came from uh, russia or ukraine with nothing <clears throat> absolutely nothing and then they sent all four of their sons four sons um to world war ii hold on so now i gotta i gotta read it so uh so like so then they were featured in numerous national articles and international articles for their bravery and so um so this is the end of the article this is about 
I get emotional reading this every time, but I'm going to try not to here. But um, so this is about my grandmother, who I'm named in honor. Um, uh, it's very hard. Uh, and the small, frail old mother suddenly loomed in my eyes like a titan, a true soldier who on the battlefield of a gray life has won the battle on behalf of her boys and who is now sending them forth to help win the mighty conflict, which is to decide the destiny of nation and world. And as I felt in mind the warm and trembling hand of hers when we parted, I was seized by an impulse to salute her as my superior and to say uh, goodbye, Colonel. Um, she was nicknamed the Little Colonel. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's um, that's who I'm named in honor of. And then my father, Pure Hero, and then Ralph Waldo Emerson, to be great is to be misunderstood. So that would be a good dinner. Yeah. I was not expecting that answer, and I I love it. Thank you so much for that. Using people from your family is right on par with your gratitude and your opening statement. So I really love that. Thank you. All right, book to movie. This is question number three. Your book, Epic Life, hit number one on Amazon Kindle. If it were adapted into a movie, who would play you, and what would the most dramatic scene be? Oh, I'd, I'd probably play myself. Um, I think it would be better for that. I, I didn't do the voiceover for it, um, but for that movie or for that book or that movie. Um, and then the most dramatic part would be whatever, uh, whenever it's uh, my dad's war diary from World War II is discussed because um, that was pure bravery. Um, and then Epic Journey, uh, book, the one I just finished, and very grateful Dr. Deepak Chopra is doing an, an introduction for it. There's more uh, diary entries from it. Um, and I actually do think that book is going to be turned into a movie um, eventually. There's there's just too much alignment with it. Um, and that's where I see that one going. I love that. Yeah, the more I'm learning about this book, I can definitely see it as a movie, and I definitely see it inspiring generations to come thank Question you for time travel imagine you're a time traveler from 2050 what's the most mind-blowing change you've seen and how ver visionaries serve humanity yeah um that's a good question for a futurist which i'm not um present is a gift presence is a gift so but then if you don't know where you come from you don't know where you are then you don't know where you're going so i i know where i come from pretty well that allows me to know where I am and know where I'm going um, but I don't really care uh, about um, the future in terms of in terms of the actual technology uh, all I care about is that people are living their purpose and then they heal their own hearts so if I can help people do that in some capacity then the world can heal its its own broken heart I dig that question five desert island books you're stranded on a desert island with only three business books oh I, I know you don't like that word <laughs> ooh, which, ooh. which ones do you choose none i don't read those books zero okay so let me re-ask let me go back to the other question since you're not going to answer question five because you don't <laughs> like the word business i'm going to go back to a follow-up question i would have asked about number four about how visionaries how you see visionaries serve humanity do you believe that visionaries are here specifically out of the core like the main core principle for visionaries is that to ignite people in their god-given purpose their creator's purpose a hundred a hundred percent um it's um you know as i um uh, finished finished this epic journey book i've you know i i've i'm i'm very large uh, very logical very logical, have a high IQ, you know, did well in school, um, got full academic scholarship to college, like I have a brain. Uh, after a while, the only logic is illogic and love and just completely following your heart. Mm. And at the highest visionary level, the very highest, it's there is no choice. People talk about you have a choice to make, not at the highest level. It's a commandment from a it's a it's a pure commandment from a higher power um and there's no there's no choice no choice oh my 
gosh, I've got chills running through my body. I love that answer. I, the no choice, you saying no choice over no and over It just, okay, yeah. I'm going to make this about me for just a second. I don't. I feel like if I give up on what I'm doing, I might as well just put a bullet. In my you might head. as well die. There's yeah, no there's problem. no purpose in living. That is where I'm at with it. Right. At the same time, which makes the process even crazier, because when you're a visionary and you're pursuing your passion and you're pursuing your dream, there is no certainties, and it looks like failure all around you. It's. I don't believe in that word. Complete. It's a complete act of faith. You don't believe in the word failure, but it can appear to a visionary as failure when everything they lose their family, they lose their jobs, they lose their homes. That's what it is. Those things. That's part of the journey. That's what and I'm most saying. Most people can't saying, do it. They can't do it. That's why they're not. They're not meant for that. Like if everyone was a visionary, the world would be. It'd be complete anarchy and it'd be chaos. But no, there's no. Um, there's, there is no choice. I mean, you technically could make a choice, but you'd be dead inside. Um, you'd be dead inside and you wouldn't be serving your purpose anyway. So again, most people, what a visionary is most damaged person with best coping skills, the most damaged, most damaged, but they have the highest IQ and EQ imagination. They're able to accomplish things or push through things that most people, they, they can't do it, that they're not meant to do that. But a true visionary at the highest level, no choice. No, nope. no choice. Okay, I align with all of that. And I I, 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 I love it because that's where I'm at. That's where I feel. And I don't believe in failure either because I believe it's my destiny. 100%. But I was talking about the appearance of it because it does look like it. So I love that. Thank you. Life soundtrack, number six. If your life had a soundtrack, what would be the title of the song playing during your biggest professional breakthrough? Um. Haven't felt or thought about that. Um, haven't felt or thought about that. There's a. Um, it's on my because I how how I wrote this book was I would listen to music every day, and then whatever was um, whatever just came into my heart. Um, but there was a there was a the platoon theme song. But it was done by a DJ named, uh, uh, um, it was done by a DJ, and oh my, I don't know who the DJ was. Where is it here? I gotta find it. Oh, Tiesto. Oh. Tiesto remixed Adiago for Strings Platoon theme song. That would be it. I like that one. Not that you asked, but mine would be either World Hold On or Ecstasy of the Gold. That would be my choice. Makes sense. Number seven, global problem solver. You wake up one day with the ability to instantly solve one global problem. Which one do you choose and how does it change your approach to business? Um, or you don't like that word. Change. Okay. Which one do you choose and how does it change your approach to everyday life? Well, in all fairness, the way you originally asked it is fair is ask it is fair. And the reason why I don't like the B word is because it literally means anxiety. It comes from the Latin word by Zygnus, which means anxiety. Um, what Epic Journey book is really about is about healing your own heart so you can heal the world's heart. Um, most people are living with a broken heart, so they're they're trying to fix things with that but they're broken themselves so you have to heal themselves so by healing themselves that would fix other problems including the b word because that's anxiety and if you have a healed heart then um, not as much anxiety now that i understand why you don't like the b word i think i'm going to remove that from my vocabulary too because i actually hate that word and i also don't like the s word very much but anyway um all right number eight I don't know if you can answer this one, but we'll see. But the S word is sale. Right? It's sale, I'm guessing, is what you meant. Yeah, that's the word I don't like. It means dull and dirty. That's what it literally means. I'm not going to use that word either. Thank you. Yeah. Emoji day. Describe your perfect day as a visionary connector using only emojis. Oh, God. <laughs> and then translate it for us mortals. 
Uh, just a heart, bunch of hearts. I, you know what? That's a good answer. All right, number nine, entrepreneur swap. If you could trade lives for, nope. is that a bad word too? Wouldn't do. I wouldn't trade lives with anyone. Okay, that ends that question. Number ten, magic wand. If you don't like that word either. Just <laughs> I like most words. Okay, <laughs> you've been given a magic wand to instantly instill one quality into every human. I'm remove the other word. What quality do you choose, and how does it transform the world? It's a very good question. I really want to feel that one. One quality would be the ability to not make excuses. Most people live in fear and excuses. Powerful. Wow. No, no other comment. Just wow. Number 11. Career recipe. If your career was a recipe, what would be the three main ingredients and what's the secret sauce that ties it all together? Well, the human body is 60% water and I always laugh when people run out of the rain because they're afraid of themselves. They're afraid of the majority of themselves, so they are afraid of rain. So water would be, water would be one. Water would be one. Um, um, that would, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what's healthiest, what's healthiest to eat that I really, probably coffee would be another, <laughs> coffee would be another one. Um, um, and then a vitamin, a good vitamin. Okay. <laughs> Number 12, off topic TED Talk. You're hosting a TED Talk. But it has to be about something completely unrelated to the B word. What topic do you choose and why? Connecting visionaries to serve humanity. That's my entire purpose. Damn. All right. That, that was that was too easy. Okay, number 13. <laughs> video game character. Imagine you're a character in a video game called Entrepreneurial Quest. What's your special move and how do you defeat the final boss? Well, I think that's a fair question. I don't believe in competition or defeating anyone. Um, I only only want to help people that understand this and then want to that want to help others who understand this. Um, so um, it, all I like to do is is talk to people like us and connect them. Um, if you want to consider that a movie or a video game or a book or a song, that's fine. I appreciate that. I just, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing and never stop doing it. You know, the whole point of this broadcast is to showcase who people really are. And your answers are consistent all the way through. A genius is one who is most like himself. I love it, man. I love, this is, this is wonderful. Number 14 message to your younger self. If you could send a message to your nothing. younger self. I would say nothing to him. Hold on a second. If you could send a message to your younger self just starting out, what would it be? Nothing. Towards it? Nothing. I'd say nothing. Absolutely Can nothing. Why? Like, because what? everything that is meant to be is meant to be with action and no excuses. Yeah. There you go. That's an answer. Number 15. Hogwarts course. You've been asked to create a new course for a Hogwarts School of Entrepreneurship and Humanity. What's it called and what's the first lesson? Well, as interesting as that sounds, that's, that's probably what our company is, Epic Fit Network. It's a, it's adult kindergarten, so kindergarten <laughs> is what it is. Um, I would say that's what it, I mean, I think that's really what our company is, is Hogwarts for visionaries. That's actually the best thing. Uh, that would be the best sales advertisement possible because it makes perfect sense. You say that and I can absolutely imagine it, picture it, feel it, yeah. smell it. I love that. Wow. All right. Number 16, theme park ride. If your professional journey was a theme park ride, what kind of ride would it be? And what would the warning sign at the entrance be? <laughs> 
our um, I just took our 11 year old uh, son Jake. Uh, both Jake and uh, his 10 year old brother Chase they love roller coasters, so I just took them to I took Jake to Great America, um, and we rode uh, Raging Bull. Raging Bull's the highest and fastest roller coaster there, so Raging Bull would would be the name. Um, and you know whatever disclaimer you want to call it, but this life is not for everyone. In fact, it's for almost no one. Um, you know, maybe 0.1 percent of the population. It's probably probably less than that. So one out of a thousand, eight million out of eight billion. But it it's really for you know eight thousand, eighty thousand. Um, so the disclaimer is, you know, the you know this ride is not for everyone. It's for almost no one. I have chills in the spine and the back of my head and my leg. It almost makes me want to cry. You saying that? To be great is to be misunderstood. Most people don't understand visionaries because they're not visionary and they don't understand uh, what it takes to get on a ride like that. <clears throat> Holy crap, wow. Okay, um, <clears throat> number 17, entrepreneur's amendment. You're given the chance to add one amendment to the entrepreneur's constitution. What is it and how does it change the game? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Um, entrepreneurs just make their own rules. They don't follow other people's rules. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I guess you do have to live in a human construct. I always joke, but not joke, that stop signs with the white outlines are optional. Um, they're really not, but in, they, they really are also. Um, it, I think... I think an amend would, would be that the, the B word is actually outlawed by any entrepreneur. They're not allowed to say it anymore. It'd be funny. B word is business, by the way, just making sure that. <laughs> making sure that they're, 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 That's they're, probably appropriate because this will be put in clips also. So we'll just make sure yeah. we're, not, we're not talking about some of the other versions of that word. Yeah. I love that answer. Number 18, lifetime supply. We're almost done here. If you could have a lifetime supply of one thing to help you and your mission of connecting visionaries, what would it be and how would you use it? Uh, consciousness. Woo! You want to expand on that or is that it? Well, all this other stuff takes care of itself if your consciousness rises. That's a great answer. <sighs> Entrepreneurial survivor. Imagine you're a contestant on Entrepreneurial Survivor. Uh, what's your strategy to win, and what's the one luxury item you bring? So strategy comes from the word strategic, uh, which comes from a Latin word, which means the highest form of leadership, general leadership, like general in an army. So that's the highest form of leader, strategic. Okay. Um, and the highest form of leadership is never blaming anyone else and never making excuses. So you never, a visionary never blames anyone else ever, never. And always takes responsibility, always shows up early. Um, and I'm not really a luxury item person. Uh, uh, boy, uh, maybe a nice pillow. I, is that? <laughs> A good pillow is good. I like that. Okay. Number 20, clickbait headline. If your career, I hope that's not a bad word. If your <laughs> career had a clickbait headline, what would it be? Now give us the real story behind that headline. Um, uh, the cream rises to the top. Uh, it's something my father said every day um, that he was alive. Um, that's my favorite saying of his. Um, so I used to think that was, um, you know, getting to top of journalism ladder and then starting a global PR firm and making a global PR firm. And then used to think it was writing books that did well or starting another company that was named one of top five masterminds on planet and it's adult kindergarten for visionaries. Uh, but no, it's really raising level of consciousness and then 
purely following your heart no matter what, no matter how painful, no matter how painful or misunderstood others might not understand it. You just do it. You do it anyway. That's what I've, that's what the cream rises to the top actually means at this point as a 47 year old, I'll be curious to see what it means as a 48 year old, but that's what it means now. So good. The very last question. Number 21 visionary holiday you've been tasked with creating a new national holiday celebrating visionaries and humanity what's it called and how do people celebrate it hmm a holiday is a holy day holy um and then um i had been looking for a sanctuary whole life um that's what i and then felt it really felt it within our company so sanctuary day sanctuary day i love that that concludes the 21 questions but justin i would love for you to share with the audience how they can support you um and i also want to give you the final word share what's on your heart let people know how they can find you apply for the mastermind or support your work buy your books etc oh well thank you um we've both said the term thank you many times during this so what thank you actually means is um acknowledging the other person's humanity acknowledging the other person's humanity um i mean landing the plane the company the website is the epicfit.com the epicfit.com um but you know i'm just i'm grateful to be alive at this time um uh, with the technology that allows this type of connectivity. Um, so very grateful for that. I am too. You, I, I, I'm, I'm really grateful for your heartfelt, sincere and authentic answers. Even when you didn't like the question, just being <laughs> real that I, because I, I mean, look, this is not perfect. I'm working out this format and I really work hard to create good questions and fun questions. But what I admire most is an answers that are authentic, even when they're not necessarily the question you want. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you showing up the way that you did, answering all the questions, and also just dropping so much heartfelt wisdom. It means a lot to me, and I really, really enjoyed you being here. Thank you. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. All right. Talk soon.